Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cut out hair. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's episode, we're tackling one of the most difficult things to cut out from this background, and that is hair. Now, in yesterday's episode, we showed you how to cut out just about anything. So like, let's say you wanna cut a person out of the background. You would wanna use the pen tool for the majority of the person and then use the technique I'm gonna show you today for their hair. So using those two combined and you can cut out anything from its background. So here's our image for today. I specifically chose an image that was a little bit more difficult because if you just have a subject with like, you know, very little detail in their hair and they're on a pure white background, honestly, that's pretty easy. But here you can see our subject has a lot of detail in his hair and the background is relatively complex. Now, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can actually download this sample image, just follow the link right down below and you get the PSD as well, which is super nice. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually select our subject. Now I'm using the latest version of Photoshop. This is CC 2020. And with this edition, they've added select subject, which I think is fantastic. So if you go to select and down to subject, boom. Basically, it's gonna figure out what the subject of your image is and turn them into a selection. How amazing is that? Now, it's not perfect, okay? We can see it didn't get this little speed light here exactly how we wanted, and it didn't get this area here, uh, but that's totally okay. We can actually go in here with like the lasso tool and clean this up. So let's go to our lasso tool. Uh, I'm gonna hold shift. There we go. That's gonna allow me to add this lasso and then hold alt or option and then I can create very easily polygonal lassos. Oop. So we're adding to that. And then this selected a little bit too much. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, which will minus from a selection. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and select this out here. Now, I'm not trying to be incredibly accurate in this case. This tutorial is about the hair. So I'm not, you know, not trying to get these other areas perfect, but we'll get them decent. Again, if you want perfect selections over these areas, I recommend using the pen tool and yesterday's episode showed you how to do that. Okay, well, that actually looks pretty dang good for now. So let's go ahead and click on our boop, layer mask icon. And you can see our subject is cut out from the background, but his hair doesn't look that great, right? <laughs> it needs a little bit of help. I mean, his hair looks fine. The selection doesn't look that great. And this is what we're gonna run into pretty frequently because hair is a lot of fine detail and a lot of these automatic selection tools don't work that well. Now, there are so many different techniques for doing a great job cutting out hair. We actually have an entire pro tutorial on flurn.com dedicated to just cutting out hair. But the strategy that we're gonna use here is incredibly simple and it will work a lot of the time. So we're basically gonna use select and mask and the refine edge tool within select and mask to figure out what is hair and what is background and alter the selection based on what we paint. So go ahead and click on your layer mask and go up to select and then down to select and mask. Here we go. Now here in the select and mask dialog, you have a few different views you can choose from. So you can choose to have it view an onion skin where you see a partial transparency, marching ants. I find this view here, the overlay view, to actually be pretty helpful because I just see my subject on a red background. Okay, now you can also choose your opacity. So if your image looks a little bit different from mine, these are basically probably just your view options. Okay, now we have a few tools here on the left-hand side. We have tools like the quick selection tool, which basically allows you to add or remove from your selection. Right down below it, we have the refine edge brush tool. And this is really where the magic of select and mask comes in, in my opinion. So the refine edge brush tool. Basically how this tool works is wherever you click. So let's say I click here inside of the hair, it's gonna start sampling the texture and the color from wherever I click. And it's gonna say, okay, you must want that. And as I click and draw out, it's gonna continue to look for that texture and color and refine my selection to include more areas with that texture and color. So here's how we do it. We click inside here and we just drag out a little bit. And you don't have to do this over and over again. I can just continue to paint right over here and it's gonna to continue to discover areas that are similar to wherever I clicked originally. Okay, and we're gonna come back up here. You can see it's getting the hair area. 
Now, I don't necessarily want to do this all the way inside of my hairline because it can remove areas that are dissimilar to wherever you clicked originally, which we usually don't want, right? But in this case, you can see, there we go. Hair has a little bit of transparency. We want to make sure we include that as well. All right, and we're just going to kind of come and paint right around there to the very end. And then when we let go, it does a bit of figuring out. It's like, okay, cool. I, I think I know what I'm doing here. Let's figure everything out and make a selection based on that. So at this point, this actually looks pretty good. You can see it's discovered a lot of the hair and we're ready to go. So once it looks like this, go ahead and say output. You have a few different options. Remember we clicked on the layer mask to start with, so it's gonna update the actual layer mask. So layer mask looks good, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. There we go, and you can see it updated our layer mask. So let's hold alt or option and click here on the layer mask and look how nice that is. It's done a really, really good job. Now, if it's not perfect, not a big deal. Let's hit B for the brush tool, and we're gonna paint black and white on our layer mask, but we're gonna make sure we change the mode of the brush tool to overlay. With your brush tool just set to normal mode, that's what it looks like to paint black, that's what it looks like to paint white. And we know on a layer mask, black will make it invisible, white will make it visible. So what we wanna do is change this from normal down to overlay. And now check out what it looks like when I paint black. Instead of filling in, see I'm just gonna paint from here all the way over here, just like that. You can see it's protecting the lighter areas, okay? So if you have an area like this, where maybe I wanna darken that up, but not just like totally paint black over these areas, overlay is the way to go. And if you paint white, it's gonna protect your light areas as well, okay? So if you ever do change the mode of your brush, I highly, highly, highly suggest changing it back before moving on, uh, because I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to use my brush tool like a day later, and it just like isn't working, and I'm like, what's going on? and then I realized the brush mode was set to overlay or something like that. So just make sure you change your brush mode back to normal, super important, okay? That looks fantastic. Now let's hold Alt or Option and click back on our layer mask and see what we've done. So you can see we cleaned that area up and now our selection looks fantastic. So let's go ahead and grab a solid color fill layer. We're just gonna go all the way to white and put this directly behind our subject and check that out. Our subject is, let's hit F one more time for full screen. Our subject is cut out very well from his background. All of the hair looks fantastic and we use just a couple simple tools to get there. And that's all there is to cutting hair out of its background. Again, if you have a more complicated situation or you wanna learn more methods for doing this, because honestly, there's a lot of different types of hair, a lot of different types of background, uh, you can click right up here to learn a little bit more. We have a pro tutorial that goes super in depth on cutting out hair. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying 30 days of Photoshop. We've got just a couple more days. Tomorrow, we're gonna show you how to match a subject into the background. We're gonna show you how to analyze and correct color and light levels for compositing. I'll learn you later. See you tomorrow. Bye everyone.